Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton, and in this video we're going to continue talking about getting information from the graph of a function. So in the previous video we talked about how to find the domain and range when you're given the graph of a function, and also how to solve an equation or inequality graphically. In this video we're going to talk about how to identify an interval where a function is either increasing or decreasing using only its graph, and then also determine the local or sometimes called relative maximum and minimum values of a function from its graph and also using technology. So increasing and decreasing functions. It's actually very helpful to know when a graph of a function is either rising or falling from left to right. The graph that's shown below actually rises, falls, and then also rises again as we move from left to right. It actually shows that the function will actually rise from a point A until a point B, and then it will fall from point B to point C, and then the graph again rises from point C to point D. Now keep in mind, as we find out where a graph is either increasing or decreasing, rises or falls, we're actually going to use only the x values to describe where the graph will actually rise or fall from left to right. We always just use the x values, x values from the domain of the function. And we also only use open parentheses when we're writing increasing and decreasing intervals because the function cannot be increasing or decreasing at an endpoint. You have to actually talk about either side of a point, whether the graph is either rising or falling from left to right. A function f of x is said to be increasing when the graph is rising from left to right, and the function is decreasing whenever the graph is falling from left to right. So we actually get this definition for increasing and decreasing intervals for a function. So a function f of x is increasing on an interval, capital I, so that's some open interval, if f of x of 1 is less than f of x of 2 whenever x1 is less than x2 in that interval. That means x1 is less than x2. That means x1 is on the left side of x sub 2. And so your y value at x sub 1, which is on the left, is below the y value at x sub 2, because it's less than f of x sub 2. So if your y values increase as you go to the right from x1 to x2, then the function is increasing on that interval. And on the other hand, a function f of x is decreasing on an interval i, if f of x of 1 is greater than f of x of 2 whenever x1 is less than x of 2. So again, x1 is on the left side of x of 2 on this interval. If your y value was larger than the, what the y value will be on the right side when it gets to x of 2, then the function must have been falling or decreasing from left to right. So we can see that in the figures below. Notice that x of 1 is on the left side of x of 2, so that means x of 1 is less than x of 2. Now, if you evaluate the y values at these two specific x values, f of x of 1 will give you the y value or this point here, and then you have f of x of 2, you evaluate it and get this y value or this point. If the graph is actually rising from left to right, that means f of x of 2 had to have a larger value than f of x of 1. And so that means the function f is increasing on that interval. And again, if the function is decreasing on the interval x of 1 to x of 2, x sub 1 is on the left side of x sub 2, so x sub 1 is less than x sub 2. If your y value was originally f of x sub 1 and it falls to f of x sub 2, so f of x sub 1 was larger value than the output value at x sub 2, then the function had to fall from left to right or it's decreasing on that interval. And again, just an important point, when you express intervals on which the function is either increasing or decreasing, you only use the input values or the x values to describe the behavior of the graph, whether it's either falling or rising from left to right. So let's take a look at example four, increasing and decreasing. Given the graph of the function shown below, determine the intervals on which the function is either increasing or decreasing. So this is the graph of y equals f of x. I've labeled some important points on the graph. You have this point at negative two, comma negative two, this point at zero, zero, one comma negative one is another point, and then three comma one is the other point. Notice that the graph is either increasing or decreasing as you go from left to right. So let's start on the left. It looks like the function is decreasing or falling until you get to the x value, x equals negative two. So it's decreasing from negative infinity, that's an x value, so you're decreasing from the left from forever. It's decreasing from negative infinity until you get to the x value, x equals negative two. And I use parentheses because we don't want to include the endpoints. Union, the graph is also falling, starting at x equals 0, and it falls until you get to x equals 1, with open parentheses. And then the graph is also falling when you are at x equals 3, and then it falls to the right forever as you go to the right. So that would be 3 to infinity. So notice that even though the graph falls from to the right, it's actually going to the right where we're actually describing that it's decreasing. 
So it's 3 to infinity, not 3 to negative infinity. So we're not using the y values at all, just the x values. On the other hand, if the graph's not decreasing, let's check to see where it's increasing. It looks like the graph is increasing whenever x is equal to negative 2 until it gets to x equals 0. So that's negative 2 comma 0. So that's an interval where the function's increasing or rising from left to right using only x values. And then the graph is also increasing from x equals 1 until x equals 3. And so that would be parentheses 1 comma 3. And so the graph is increasing from negative 2 to 0, union 1 to 3. And the function is decreasing from negative infinity to negative 2, union 0 to 1, union 3 to infinity, and all of these have parentheses. So you may have noticed in the previous example that there are important points that you may want to look at in terms of the graph, whether the graph is increasing or decreasing. These are called local maximum and minimum values of a function. When you're trying to find the largest or the smallest values of a function that actually can attain on the function's graph, then these are going to have very important applications where you want to find the maximum or minimum values. We can easily find these values on the graph. So if we want to first define the local maximum or local minimum values, we would have this definition. The function value, f of a, is the local, or sometimes people call it the relative, maximum value of f of x, the function, if f of a is greater than or equal to f of x whenever x is near x equals a. What this means is that f of a is greater than or equal to f of x for all the x values in some open interval where that's containing x equals a. And in this case, we say that the function has a local or relative maximum at x equals a. So in terms of what this definition is telling us is that the function, the y value, is called the maximum value if it is the largest for all the other y values when your x value is really close to this x equals a is where the maximum value occurs. All the other y values are below f of a. So that f of a is called the maximum value. On the other hand, the function value f of a is called a local or sometimes relative minimum value of f of x if f of a is less than or equal to f of x whenever x is near x equals a. And this means that f of a is less than or equal to f of x for all the x values in some open interval containing the value x equals a. So f of x, the function, will have a local or relative minimum value at this value x equals a. And so again, this time it means f of a is the y value. The y value is a minimum value of the function when the y value is the smallest y value compared to all the other y values at x values when you're close to x equals a. And if that's the case, we say that, that the function will have a local or relative minimum and it will be located at this x equals a. But the minimum value is f of a, the y value or output value. So now that we talked about the definition of local maximum and local minimum, let's actually do an example finding out what the local maximum and local minimum values are for a function. Let's say we have the graph of this function, y equals f of x. And I've just made up some arbitrary points. One point is at 2 comma 6. This other point is at 4 comma negative 1. This other point is at 5 comma 4. And this other last point is at 8 comma 1. Let's try to find out what the local maximum and local minimum values are for this function. So if you're looking for a local maximum value, you're looking for the very top of a hill. So notice that the function is increasing until you get to x equals 2, and then it's decreasing after x equals 2. That means you had to form a top of a hill, or a local maximum value, a local maximum point. So you have this local maximum point at 2 comma 6. That means that the local maximum value is 6, y equals 6, and it occurs at the value x equals 2. On the other hand, we also have a top of a hill over here as well at the point 5 comma 4. That would also be a local maximum point. The local maximum value is 4, and it occurs at the value x equals 5. So notice that there's a difference between what is the local maximum value and what is the local maximum value actually occurring at. So the function will have a local maximum of y equals 6 and y equals 4. Those are two different local maximum values. Those are two different tops of the hill of the graph. And then the function will have a local maximum value at, those are locations on your x-axis where they're actually occurring. It actually occurs at x equals 2 and also x equals 5. And notice that we have two different local maximum points or local maximum values. That means you can actually say local maxima to be plural if you have more than one. 
On the other hand, if you look for local minimum values, you're looking for the very bottom of the valley. So you have this dip in the graph at the point 4 comma negative 1, and then there's also a dip in the graph at 8 comma 1. The graph is decreasing on the left side of x equals 4, and then the graph is increasing on the right side of x equals 4. So that means that you have a local minimum point at 4 comma negative 1. The local minimum value would be y equals negative 1, and it occurs at x equals 4. And again, you also have a local minimum point at the point 8 comma 1 because the graph is decreasing on the left side of x equals 8, and then it's increasing on the right side of x equals 8. And so the local minimum value would be y equals 1, and the local minimum occurs at x equals 8. And so to summarize, the function has a local minimum, or minima if you have more than one, y equals negative 1, and y equals 1, those are local minimum values, and the function has a local minimum at the values x equals 4 and also x equals 8. Now if we're given the graph of the function, we need to find out where these local maximum and local minimum values are. Sometimes you may actually have to find the local maximum and local minimum points using a graphing calculator. So if there is a viewing window such that the point a comma f of a is the highest point on the graph of the function within that viewing window, then the number f of a, the y value or the output value, is called a local maximum value of the function. And again, if you also have a viewing window that actually shows there's a point b comma f of b is the lowest point on the graph of a, of a function f of x within that viewing window, then the function value or the output value f of b is called the local minimum value of the function. So in example 5, we're going to talk about how to find the local maxima and local minimum values using a graphing calculator or technology. Use a graphing utility to graph the following function, f of x is equal to 0.25x to the fourth plus 0.3 times x to the third, subtract 0.9x squared plus 3. Approximate at what x values, if any, the function f of x has a local maximum and local minimum and round your answers to three decimal places. So we're talking about just the x values here, where we have a local maximum and a local minimum value. So as we go through this example, we're actually going to be following these steps to find the maximum and minimum values in your graphing calculator. The first thing that you'll need to do is tell your graphing calculator the function that you want to graph. So we're going to press y equals on our graphing calculator to enter in the function. So now enter in the function under y1, we have 0.25x to the fourth power, and then we want to plus 0.3x to the third, and then subtract 0.9x squared, and then plus 3. So as we're entering the function, keep in mind that we're going to enter the function under y1 and also use the variable button x as the input variable. And now if you hit the graph button, you actually see the graph of the function. So notice in the graph, the function is decreasing until this minimum point, and then the function is increasing until the maximum, and then decreasing to another minimum, and then the graph is increasing at the end. So we're going to find two minima and also one local maximum with the graphing calculator. So to find the local minimum or local maximum values, you need to go to second and then hit trace or the calculate button in blue, which is calculate with the graph. We want to find one of the minimum values first. So scroll down to number three on the minimum and hit enter. And the graphing calculator is going to give you a couple different options or different questions. Left bound. That means you need to choose an x value that's on the left side of the local minimum value you're trying to find. So use your arrow keys to scroll to the left on the graphing calculator. And then I'm on the left side of where I want to find this local minimum value. So on the left side, hit enter. Doesn't matter where, just be on the left side of the local minimum. And then scroll to the right because now it's going to ask for the right bound. So choose an x value on the right side of the local minimum value. But you don't want to go too, too far to the right because we have two local minimum values. We want to make sure that we hone in on just one of them. So this is a good value on the right side of the local minimum. Hit enter. And then the graph calculator is going to make you guess. Is your local minimum value that you're looking for between those two different arrows that's indicated on the graphing calculator? It is. So you can either guess or you don't have to guess. Just hit enter. And the local minimum value is 0.948. If you round to three decimal places, that's the local minimum value, the y value. But the local minimum value occurs at the value x equals negative 1.865 when you round to three decimal places. And notice on the graphing calculator, it actually indicates with a flashing point where the local minimum point is actually located. 
Now let's do the same steps. We can actually find the other local minimum value the same way. So second, calc. We're going to choose number three again for minimum. Now again, we're going to be asked the three same questions. Left bound, right bound, and guess. Left bound, let's make sure that we choose an x value on the left side of the other local minimum value. So let's choose a point on the left side of this other dip that we have in the graph. Let's choose that value. And then right bound, choose on the right side of the local minimum point. Hit enter when you're on the right side. And then guess, is your local minimum value you're trying to search for between those two different arrows? Yes. So hit enter. And so the local minimum value is y equals 2.648 when you round the three decimal places. And the local minimum value occurs at x equals 0 0.965 approximately. And so we have a local minimum point located where the graph is actually flashing the, the cursor. So that's how you find the local minimum values. If you want to find the local maximum value, it's the same thing. Go to second, calc, or trace button. This time we want option number four for maximum. Hit enter. And the same three questions, left bound, right bound, and guess. Well, it looks like there's a hill at x equals zero. So it's somewhere right on the y-axis, it looks like. So left bound would be a good place here. Right bound, scroll to the right on the right side of the y-axis. That's good. And then the guess between those two different values. That's good. And so the maximum value is y equals 3. And the calculator tells us that the local maximum value occurs at this number. x equals negative 1.856e to negative 6. Well, that number is so close to 0, it actually gives us an error. This is a number that's in scientific notation. It's negative 1856 times 10 to the negative 6 exponent. Well, the calculator is using some algorithm on how to find the local maximum value. It looks like the maximum value occurs right on the y-axis. That's when x equals 0. So this is actually an error in the calculator. It actually occurs at x equals 0, not this number that's really close to 0. And so when the y value is 3, we know that x had to be 0. If we plug 0 into the function, we would get 3. And so the local maximum is y equals 3. The local maximum value occurs at x equals 0. So just be a little careful when your graphing calculator gives you a, an answer in scientific notation. It actually would be corresponding to a value that's really close to 0, as we would see here. So we had two different local minimum values. We had a local minimum of 0 0.948 and also 2.648, and they occurred at the x values, negative 1.865, and also 0 0.965. And we had one local maximum point. The local maximum is y equals 3, and it occurred at x equals 0. So this finishes our video on finding increasing and decreasing intervals for a function's graph, and also to find the local maximum and local minimum values for a function using its graph. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about the average rate of change of a function.